I am Coach Sess, motivated and determined, and you are listening to Words with a Mad Coach. So what's going on with you as you make your final preparations going into this weekend for your title defense? Uh, yes, I have. I'm just waiting now to just step on the scale and then uh, go out and have fun tomorrow. What time does that weigh in today? My weigh-ins are at 4.30, and then we got the media weigh-ins at 6. Who's the guy you're fighting again? Jordan Fowler out of Arkansas. Oh, yeah. And um, so I did a little research before I called you. and um, So he's got a lot more fights than you. Yeah. And I also noticed that in your last, um, I guess this be your third fight where you're fighting guys more experienced than you. Yes. Uh, is this how you're testing yourself? Uh, yeah, because I, I, I feel like um, I feel like training wise, uh, I, I train a lot more than these guys out here. So um, I think it kind of evens the experience level for me. And um, I, I just don't I want to push myself just to see if I'm ready to take it to that next level. And what is that next level? Um, want to go pro, um, depending on how, how this uh, this fight uh, goes. And, and you are in Tennessee, right? Yes, out in Memphis. So what's the competition level like in that area? Uh, there's, there's a lot of tough guys out here. Um, as far as uh, training, I, I feel like I'm, I'm at the best gym um, in the area by far. But there, there are a lot of tough guys out here. And what's that gym you're with? Uh, Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, the main fighters we have uh, my guy Jaleel Willis. He um he just fought on the LFA card, hell on LFA card, uh, I believe last Friday. Um, you have uh, Jesse James Wallace. Um, he's a pro. I believe he's five and two. Um, you have my guy Darius Foster, Hunter Joffrey. We have Omari Boyd, who is a uh, kickboxer. He just fought on Glory uh, last Friday as well. Um, so we have a we have a lot of talented fighters. Nice. And from what I've been following on your Facebook, uh, a lot of uh, upcoming amateurs as well with championship belts wrapped around the waist. Yes, we do. We uh, we our goal is we we try to get two belts, and they walk around calling each other champ, champ. I'm just a champ because <laughs> my first title uh, fight I fought before I lost. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a regular champ, <laughs> right? See, I, I am so happy for you because. Um, I get excited about any guys that were, you know, former Team Rock alumni or whatever, you know, that leave and they're able to go and find another good place and keep their careers going. Uh, you guys you may not know that came slightly before you or after you guys, like um, uh, Michael Santos. He went right. out to uh, Colorado. Uh, I think you remember Ricky Saxton? Yeah, I remember Ricky. Uh, Ricky got to go train with um, Elevation, and now Ricky's in the Army. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, he's in the Army, and uh, he's been back lately helping us out. So it's always good to see you guys go and explore different territories and because uh, you'll always be welcome to, to, to come back. You guys were an important part, you know, uh, in helping not only the gym grow, but you gave this old coach um, a chance to, I don't want to say I used you guys like guinea pigs, but you guys kind of let me uh, work with you a little bit to see how things go, flow, may work, may not work. And I developed uh, my coaching style because of a lot of guys like yourself. I definitely appreciate it, Coach. It's, it's a lot of, of what you taught me that I, I still hold true to this day. I, one of the things uh, that we'll constantly talk about in the gym uh, with some of the upcoming fighters and coaches, uh, a good coach, no matter where you go, will have certain traits. And one of them is that they tend to repeat themselves. So I wouldn't be surprised if you heard your coaches say something that I've said. Yes, I, I just heard one uh, yesterday, as a, as a matter of fact. Um, I remember I, you always talked about um, as far as like competition in the gym and uh, and egos. And uh, one of one of our coaches talked to us about something similar to that yesterday. Yeah, you got to keep the, um, I, you know, you don't want to put guys on a pedestal, but 
you know, like you, you're the champion. You got a fight coming up. And I really apply this to a lot of guys who are getting ready for fights. You have the guys that walk in the door or you have the guys that train there regularly, but they don't, they don't compete. Mm -hmm. So you're their measuring stick of how well they do. And sometimes they go a little too hard. They don't realize that when you're going through a camp, how, how long do you run your camps for? Um, I normally do mine about six to eight weeks. That, and that's my point. For six to eight weeks, you're gradually getting weaker and weaker every day to make your weight. You're doing, you know, depends on how many times you train a day. Depends on uh, the, the duration of that training. Depends on what you do. Say, for instance, if you get up in the morning, you do conditioning. And then you do your combat stuff in the evening. And then they only come that one time, maybe three times a week. And right. They, they want to give it 110%, not realizing that you are not 110%. And then they get even more frustrated because you're somewhere around about 60% and you still throw them around, submit them, knock them down or whatever. And you have to because you got to defend yourself. You know, right. It's not the way to do it, but you got to defend yourself. And they get even more frustrated. And so those guys don't understand that there's no need to compete with the, the, the champions or the fighters who are getting ready because they're already competing with themselves by putting themselves in a weaker state, you know. So, Absolutely. So your coaches are dead on. You got to keep that ego out of the gym. And a lot of guys don't realize where it comes from, but that's where it usually comes from is that you're their measuring stick. Right. And de I definitely get that a lot. They, they <laughs> like to, they like to get on me when they, when they know I'm about, especially about three, three, two, three weeks out. And I have absolutely no energy left. Yeah. That's really try to push the pace. How, how big do you actually get before, um, I normally walk around about 25 over, um, depending on if, if, uh, like this last time was probably, probably the heaviest because I've, I've had a hard time getting people to accept the fight against me. So I got up to 30 over. Um, but I'm, I'm so tall and, and I don't carry a lot of body fat. So, um, I'm, I'm not able to, to do like most guys who can cut like 20 pounds in two weeks. It, for me, it'll, it'll take me about maybe four weeks to do just that. So I normally say about 25 over. Gotcha. And that makes sense because if you don't have a lot of body fat, then you're going to start cutting into that muscle a lot sooner than you want. Um, have you considered, or ha have you, I haven't, I didn't look at your record closely enough, but ha uh, have you considered 205? I started out at 205. Okay. Um, and my last 205 fight, I actually fought a guy, um, Sam Wallace. He was, uh, I'm 6'5", he was 6'4". And uh, he was the first fight where I felt the the difference in strength because he was he was uh, much bigger than me. Um, so as far as like I mean you know I was able to, to out technique him, but when it came to just going muscle for muscle, I, I couldn't really move him. I noticed that um, you're you're good about fighting guys uh, not only um, more experienced than you, but um, some of the guys are even quite tall for that 185 class as well. I saw one guy you fought was like six two six three. I was like, right. Hey, that's pretty. That's a. Uh, that's pretty unique because a lot of times in on the local level, that that height variance is extreme. You know, you can have a guy that's um 185, he's 5'10", and then yourself, you know, six six. I guess I'm I'm trying to say is I kind of admire what you're doing there, by taking on the guys that are similar in height, similar in strength, similar in experience, or if not better, because by the time you're ready to um make it to the big leagues, the pros, especially in the UFC, especially if you notice what the UFC is doing now, <laughs> they throwing you to the wolves. So, right. So you better train it on the local level before you get there. Right. Yeah. I, I try to, um, I just want to be prepared everywhere and, and I, I, I really want to be as well, well rounded as I possibly can. Um, I, I know with me being tall, um, when you, when you fight a lot of short guys, you kind of get used to, to the range too much. And, um, you expect to be able to just pull back from, from many more punches. And then when you get a guy that has, you know, almost equal length and reach, you, you know, that doesn't work anymore because you pull back and, you know, he's still able to, to hit you. So now you have to work on slipping and working inside. So I want to be, be really real well-rounded. Good. It's very intelligent. So what's going on in life in general? Um, I take it you're getting a lot of support from the family and friends to pursue this career. So what's, what's going on? Uh, outside of the fight game uh, that keeps you focused and level-headed? Uh, my sons. Um, my youngest son, he's he's my shadow. He uh, he watches my every move. So with him, 
I'm, I'm always, I, I don't have any room for like error. So I always try to be, to be the best example I can be to him. Uh, my family just drives me and, and I want to help, um, so many people. Like I, I want to, uh, after this fight, I'm planning on getting out in the, uh, in the city and, and going to the uh, local high schools that I, I want to be able to try to have an impact on the local youth in the area. Um, I just want to help as many as many people as, as I can, and that's kind of like where my time um, kind of lies right now. I've noticed the the uh, the radio interviews, the TV interviews. Um, are you aware of your presence now? Are you aware that you're making an impact? Um, not no, I, I'm not. I, I still feel like I have I have more to do. Um, I know you know when I did the the radio and, and TV, and I got a lot of good feedback on it. But I still don't know if I've if I've helped anyone or if it's really reached anyone or impacted them at that level yet. You should have seen some kind of feedback in terms of um, um, not necessarily people walking in the gym, but have you had any uh, sponsors or organizations reaching out to you saying, "Hey, can you come talk to our kids?" Um, especially when when I notice that everyone always wants to draw upon your military experience, you know, with, yes. with, with your, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, being a former military guy myself, but I think there's so much more to you than just that, that sometimes they miss it. Little things like, um, you know, your hat for one, you know, with, with limitless on it. And no one's really, really asked you that question. You know, I know they asked you what it means, but how did it start? What was that turning point when you decided in your mind that, there was no more limitations. Well, uh, my first, um, the coach that I, I had my first fight under, um, Coach Jason Aldridge, uh, after my first fight, so um, what he used to do, he used to kill us at practice, like during conditioning. And um, we were doing sprints. And then he just says, hey, limitless, that's what we're going with. And um, so it was basically because he, he knows my backstory from Iraq and everything, um, you know, with them being prior army as well. And uh, and he just didn't think that there was any limits to me um, with everything that I do, you know, with my injury, I'm able to work around it and, and turn that weakness into a strength. And so um, it, there was a time where I had changed uh, my fight name when I left, um, when, I, when I moved to this different gym and that name just didn't fit me. And so when I was talking to him, he said, you know, I always liked your first fight name better. So I went back to Limitless and it was when I went back to the name Limitless, that's when I started thinking more um, than it just being a fight name. It is It is exactly who I am. I don't put any more uh, self-limitations on me regardless of what it is. Um, I feel like a lot of times with the mind, um, with how our subconscious works, like we can doubt ourselves so much and you're, you really start to believe that. Like there was a, a guy in our, our gym who was fighting this Saturday and he keeps telling himself that he's, he's fat and he's out of shape. And I said, well, you're fat and you're out of shape because you believe that. Like, I've seen you improve the last few weeks. I've seen your condition and get better the last few weeks, but you're not seeing it because you keep telling yourself that. And I said, you have to remove those limitations from yourself. So I no longer limit myself. Um, I teach my kids to not limit themselves. And anybody that's around me, I'm going to tell them not to limit themselves. Man, that is awesome. What story you tell yourself becomes the reality. So you kind of have to control the narrative in, in inside your head, you know. Um, it, it sounds a little, you know, clicheous when you know someone says, you know, when they serve you lemons, make lemonade. You just got to redefine the story, but it's, there's some truth to those stories. You got to redefine who you are by telling yourself a different story. Um, just because, um, you know, it was, when it, it's it's raining outside. In one part of the world, that's a bad day. You can't go to the beach. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't have a party outside. But on the other side of the world, when it's raining, there's crops growing. You see what I'm saying? So you got you got to think about like what is the 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 positive out of this situation, and not always look at the negative. That is fantastic that you think like that. Have you um, have you had any uh, especially uh, uh, young males come up to you and say you know something you said or did changed me or helped me? Um, a lot of, a lot of my old soldiers, um, have inboxed me, um, about that. And, uh, recently it, it, it had touched me because, um, 
I believe it was right after my uh, TV interview this week, and uh, one of my old soldiers who used to be a problem soldier, um, he's not in the Army anymore, um, had inboxed me, and he left me, like, this long message just about how, you know, basically from from what I've done is, is changed his perspective on a lot of things, and, you know, he's proud to have, have served um, with me and, and how I inspire him. And it was just it was just really, really touching to me. But I, I get those all the time from guys that um that I served with or that I've known at some point within the, uh when I was in the military. Gotta make a difference in this world. Who do you who do you like um right now? You know, if, if you have to look at say Bellator, UFC, one championship or just even some local promotions, um, who do you see that's coming up from a local scene and who do you like that's on top right now? Um, a guy coming up from a local scene that I liked uh, is my guy Ryan Spann. Um, he I, just won a title. I saw that. Uh, I saw title. That. That's my guy. Um, he when he comes up here, we we train all the time, and he's he's a uh, I call him my my younger big brother. Um, we're the same height. He's he you know he's he's bigger than me though, and uh and, and obviously you know younger than me. But he's he's taught me so much in this in this fight game. He's the one who's kind of really showed me how to play with my range and um and since working with him just the the times that he comes up here has helped my game so much but i'm I'm really looking forward to him getting into the usc um as far as uh the guys at the top the guy that i really really like right now is uh, my guy max holloway um i like his i like his work ethic i like his confidence and self-belief in himself um and I just like his game, you know, for him to be a, a long guy for the 45 division and he's able to work outside and he's able to do great work inside um, with his body work. And he's the guy who has who changed my mind on uh, just staying outside. At first, I'm like, oh, I'm tall. I just want to stay rangy. But everyone's game plan against me is pretty much the same, you know, either take me down in the middle of the cage if they can or push me against the cage and take me down. And I've worked so much on um, on inside fighting because of Max Holloway, and I've gotten pretty good at it now. So um, I just he he's one of the guys I look up to 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 want to keep well rounded myself. Any uh, shout outs you want to give before we wrap this up? And I really appreciate your time, my friend. Uh, that's no problem, Coach. Um, I definitely want to shout out Just Revolution. Um, my gym, Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, uh, all my coaches and, and my teammates, and definitely my um, my wife and son because they're the ones that deal with me during the weight cut. So my wife always tells me the last two weeks that I need to stay away from her. But I've been good this time, though. So, um, but yeah, I, I just want to thank those guys, and I definitely want to thank you, Coach, for, for having me on. It's no problem. Uh, any way to stream this um, this weekend? Because usually I try to catch your fights. I know I caught um, the last one. This promotion, I don't think they're they're streaming it, but I'm going to try to have someone um, Facebook Live it. Yeah, so, try to get um, the same person I, like last time. They did, did a good job. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if, if I get someone to, to Facebook Live it, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put a post up. All right, really appreciate it. Hey, I'll look, wishing you the best, brother. Go in there and do your thing and bring home that championship. I will, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you. Later.